Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again on a uh, beautiful May day. It's Mishmash Monday. Uh, really looking forward to today. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, just uh, Saturday was our show at Jacktown, and what a great time we had. And we're going to talk more about it. But let's first of all. Let's uh, see what we picked okay, up. Okay, so Saturday was the big show at Jacktown, and we try and get, anytime you go into any of these shows, you're better off getting there as early as possible and then leaving as early as possible for the simple reason is if you live anywhere near New York, traffic. Unfortunately, I got nailed both ways. I sat in like 40 minutes of traffic one way and then another hour and try. Oh, I hate New York. Don't ever come here. It's a horrible place. Okay, so we get there. Everything's good. I meet up with Joe, who is Trader Joe's. You'll see him in a comment. And uh, we start hanging out. And Joe's a great guy. He brought Charlie. You're going to hear a lot more about Charlie in a little while. Charlie's the, the wonder dog. I've never met such a fantastic dog in my life. This guy was great. And uh, let me show you what I, some of the things I picked up. Okay, now here's where I picked up at the show. First of all, these are 50 foot hanks of uh, of a manila or sisal rope. And if you can sm smell these, <laughs> you know what these smell like? If anybody ever worked with these, I love that smell. It's I don't know what it is that they treat this rope with to, so that it's uh, bug resistant and up, but it has like this interesting smell. And I've, I'm a rope guy, what can I say? And these were three for five dollars, you know? So how could you pass that up? Okay. Next up, we got, again, I didn't, I didn't go to the pickup tools. I said I wasn't going to buy anything, but of course, you know, things follow you home. Like this here, this was a dollar, and it's a, uh, I, a more. It's uh, a more 12 inch. You can see here, which I'm not really familiar with that brand, but you know how I like these auto wrenches. Again, the first thing I look at, you got to look at the jaw here. It's not mangled, so you can see that's, this all will clean up. You know how we do these. Okay. Uh, next up, I picked up some screwdrivers. Again, these go, they're less than a dollar each, but whatever. Uh, but here's the funny thing. Uh, first of all, I picked it, you know, these two came in a bunch, but, you know, how can you not like the old uh, American-made Craftsman screwdrivers? Now, if you see this, you see that little WF? That's Western Forge. And uh, they're the ones that made this particular screwdriver for for Craftsman. And over here, you know, this one here is a Master Mechanic Professional Chrome ver Vernadium. Uh, another nice screwdriver, but... Um, this one here, I just fell in love with the, the, the color. Ah, oh, this is so nice. And the shape, uh, Joe was looking at me like I was crazy when I bought this, but this is going to come out nice. And then, okay, these two. Now, uh, if any of you collect or know about SK, uh, SK tools. Okay. This is one of my favorite tools. This was my dad's socket set. And, uh, this is a SK socket set. It's a quarter inch drive. They're very popular and very desirable. Everybody loves them. Um, SK stands for Sherman Clove. And, uh, they were two gentlemen that in the early 1900s started, uh, they had a machine tool making company. They used to make tools for a lot of other now, companies. In 1933, Mason Sherman and Noah Clove uh, get the patent for the round-headed ratchet. The round-headed ratchet that we know. And it's still a part of their flagship. Uh, they still make them today. Their s &K is big into tools. and But um, one of the, back in the 60s, late 60s and 70s, they came out with this green and white uh, color combination. Now, the green acetate with the white stripe became a really popular selling screwdriver for them, and they kept it for, for quite a few years, but now they uh, they don't make them anymore, and it's very hard to find these, and when you do find them in good shape, they, they command a big dollar. On eBay, these things go for a lot of money. Uh, I bought these specifically for a friend of the show by the name of Brian Williams out in Oklahoma, 
And, uh, you know, Brian, it's, there's not a lot of work out there. So Brian hasn't had a job, but what he's been doing is he's been going to different areas like uh, flea markets and tag sales, things like that, picking up uh, tools and, and refurbish them. He re refurbished almost all his grandfather's and his father's old tools. So um, I know he has a couple of these. He's trying to get a set together and he'll make these look like brand new. These are in good shape. I mean, they're, they're not really banged up and stuff, but he'll get this like uh, perfect again as he does with the other tools. So I'm going to send these out to him. These are, uh, uh, again, these are chrome vanadium, and uh, they were a really a good screwdriver, but uh, keep an eye out. If you go to a flea market or something, you see these green and white ones, pick them up because you won't be sorry. These things turn over like crazy. Okay, lastly, we have a, a friend, Brian McGuire, a uh, friend of the show. He's He had his grand, great-grandfather's Starrett Vice. I never even seen the Starrett Vice, but uh, what happened was they snapped the... Um, the Acme thread rod, which is, you know, pretty hard to do. They snapped it in the vise, and he says, like, you know, I'm trying to fix it. He's trying to put it together. So we're working on that. So I saw this there. It's a 5 8 Acme thread, and I'm hoping that we can get this to work because uh, these things, you know, um, to find the right, you know, especially with something that has the uh, the threaded nut in it that we can adapt to get that vise back in service. So that's why I picked this up. And lastly, uh, I had a laugh because the guys were laughing. They said, what kind of cool tools did you find? And uh at the time i didn't have i've already made a drop at the car but here is a uh we just did this the other day but a, a different one this is a channel lock 420 you can see here now um if you look here this one here the other one was a uh what was it, a 57 this one's a 1953 you can see down here and uh, this one's in real nice shape except for a little bit spot rusting but look at this, this is pretty interesting i, I was looking at this over and it says champion deer mint do you see that DE and then it, it goes into a uppercase font A R M E N T Champion Deermint and I guess that PA from Meadville Pennsylvania is supposed to kind of move up there so I never seen this before in another channel lock. I guess that PA, you know, department would uh, make sense, but have you ever seen that before? If you have, let me know and leave a, a note in the comments. Okay, so at 11 a.m. Uh, I said we'd meet up at the uh, big gazebo and sure enough 11 a.m. What a turnout we had What a great bunch of people. I have to tell you. I have not uh, Ever remember meeting such a wonderful group of people before and uh, I'll show you and you, you can see in this video clip now due to restrictions in the witness protection program 357 Magdad offered to take the photo all right, once again, everybody say patina. <laughs> now we have Charlie in the picture. That's good. You know, Charlie would actually say it. Well, I feel bad for two things, actually. One thing is uh, Russ. Uh, it's always Rusty. He came all the way down from Albany to meet up, and uh, he was just happened to be looking for some tools at that time when we took the group shop. And the other thing is that um, I wish I, you know, a lot of guys brought their lovely wives, and, and they I didn't see any in the picture, and I was wondering where they were when I went back, and I looked, so I felt kind of bad about that. Those, you know, the ladies put up with their men <laughs> looking at these tool stores and, and shops and stuff, and uh, I was really appreciative that so they came funny along. story. They said, uh... The guy said, hey, well, let me see the tools you got. And like I said, I already made a dump at the car, you know, so I had nothing except for this thing over here. They said, so I opened up my backpack, and what do they see? They see, uh, <laughs> they see over here. Now, if you haven't been to Mexico before, you see they sell these on the streets and stuff, and, and it's supposed to be a hold-up man, and when you, <laughs> they actually put their hands up, you know? Okay, uh, next up, last week, remember, uh, we were talking about uh, deflection and, and shatter and things like that. And Keith Stewart, friend of the show, had his thinking cap on and he said, hey, you know, can can the belts cause that? And he is so right. And uh, I wanted to address that. Now, today. inside most of your drill presses and all machines, uh, we all BC that uh, drill presses and table saws, things like that, they're driven by a belt. And the problem is that the belt goes around the two pulleys and you see those pulleys are pretty narrow. Now, this is the belt off of that drill press that you saw, and you can see one thing. First of all, it's not round. It's oval. And the reason it's oval is because these V-belts, uh, they develop what's called a memory. And what that means is when they've been sitting for a long time, like this has been sitting like that, you could see that instead of being round like it should, it be, and even when it's in a package, they sell them like this, they develop a memory. So when the belt is spinning around the pulleys, it gets to this side, you could see this, it's going to pull, it's trying to pull itself back into its memory, which will give a wobbling now of I the belt. I reinstalled the belt on here. I'm going to turn it on to show you what it looks like when it wobbles.
Now you could see it's not going super fast, but you could see that little wobbling back and forth is going to wobble the spindle and that's going to work its way down to here and you're going to have some sort of chatter or something like that. Belts have always been a problem. Now here's an interesting shot. I did this in slow motion and if you look real close, you could see that wobbling every time that one part of the belt comes around on each side, it wobbles out and kicks out a little bit. So that'll give you that little bit of chatter or deflection you hate to have. Here on the milling machine, because it's more precision in, in trying to uh, avoid that, uh, that belt problem, they have two gears. There, here's the motor and at the end of the motor is a gear here that meets up with a gear here and uh, it gets rid of that uh, belt wobble and belt memory the problem is you do get a little bit of noise from the meshing of the gears so that's a so how do we combat that uh, belt memory if obviously if that's going to be a problem well there's really not much you could do you know they they have what's called linked belts and uh, linked belts are uh, belts that you can put together and their tr manufacturers are trying to come out with better belts that don't have as much of a memory but it is always a problem because they hang on those pulleys so what I always do when I come down here and you should do it in your shop too is every once in a while I'll give your machines a turn even if you you know I come down my shop quite often but if you haven't been down your shop for a couple weeks and you do go down there just give everything a quick you know a two second run a lot of times I'll come down here and I'll grab like the drill press here and I'll just turn the spindle like this just give it a half a turn and what that does is it takes the bend from over here by the pulley and it'll move it halfway the other way but I just give a spin or turn it on for a second and let it get out of that memory the thing position. I do with like uh, my lathe over there that's uh, I don't use you know I very rarely use is I take the tension off the belt I will uh, you know the belt there's a little lever there that you can release the tension so I just take the tension off and it stays loose and this way it's not creating a memory problem did I uh, happen to mention how awesome Charlie is how great is this dog Okay, we got to get to some kind of restoration today, right? For the mishmash, and uh, let's try out this no name emerald green jeweled screwdriver. I love this thing, it's gonna, but it looks you can see here. I don't know what is on there, I don't know what the deal is. Look over here, uh, there's a lot of scrapes and nicks, but uh, the back here, you can see it's all dinged up in the back. Are we ever going to be able to fix this that it looks decent? I don't know. Let's give it a shot. Okay, using one of my favorite tools, the uh, single edge razor blade, we scraped off all the, everything that was on it. It was some kind of paint or Bondo or something, just scraped it off and then lightly, and you let the razor blade float between your fingers so that on the pull stroke, it leans this way and on, on the push stroke, it leans that way. So it looks something like this. And you see, you take off very fine, very fine shavings. Now, we did that with all the sides here, got off everything on here. The back is going to be tough because it's got a lot of nicks and things and stuff. We're going to have to work on that. But uh, so far, it's looking good. We got rid of all the paint and everything that was on there. Now, we're just going to have to sand it down like we do everything else, take it down in grits until uh, we get this looking like a jewel. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what the screwdriver looked like before we started. And we're calling the screwdriver done. This came out nice, huh? Nice little, I love this color green, you know, this just, uh, I don't know, it's like an emerald green. You can see how nice the back came out here. Again, we just sanded it down, got everything out of here. And then, of course, we uh, we just gave it a clear coat. And that's always a way to get out any minute scratch. Gave it a clear coat with the uh, Rust-Oleum clear uh, enamel. Then we put it over the furnace to dry out and... Uh, and did the tip okay and everything's nice on this real nice screwdriver and uh, that's today's mishmash restoration real fast and uh, this one came out nice you know it's funny every time i go to jacktown i stop at this penn jersey gas station and pick up an egg salad sandwich and my girlfriend always says how could you eat gas station egg salad? Okay, we're here. Look who showed up. Everybody's here. These guys are all here from, uh, from the channel. How great is this, huh? <laughs> First time on video. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this Mishmash Monday. And uh, take care and have a good week. Bye-bye now.